So shout out to the Shake Squad, Nodi Gang Stand Up, it's your boy Shake. Today's video is gonna be centered around reuniting the community. Over the last few years, I've been periodically talking about how divided the community is, primarily because of console shortages. There weren't enough next-gen consoles to go around, so we had a split community, one on next-gen, one on old-gen. Now, even though things are getting a little bit better, that issue still persists today. Most of you guys know that 2K22 on PS4 and Xbox One was actually more popular than 2K22 on next-gen, PS5 and Series X. And for sure, that's where the majority of the player base was, but we still have a lot of people playing NBA 2K22 on old-gen today. Now recently, the PS5 and Xbox next-gen consoles have become more readily available. So today I'm gonna give you guys some things to look forward to when you make that leap to next-gen. Now if there's one thing we can count on the 2K dev team to try to do is innovate their game, sometimes on a dramatic level, every single year. There's always something new that they're trying to do, whether it's gameplay improvements or new locations, like a boat or a new city, or like they constantly change the dribble controls or adding in new dunking commands. So as you can see, there's still people that are actually playing 2K22 old gen. It's nowhere near as packed as it used to be, but there are people still having fun with the game. Because like I said, it, it still was a really good 2K. A lot of people enjoyed it. But one of the first things that you're gonna notice is if you pull up the seasons, the new seasons aren't supported. 2K was still kind enough to leave them with the final season in 2K22. So you can still unlock some of the cool features you know, like your mascots, you can still get the tiger, and of course the mascots for the affiliations. But all of this stuff is old news in comparison to what we're doing now. When you spawn in on next gen at the block, you can see there's a lot more people playing, especially when you go to affiliations. But if you pull up the season prizes, you're gonna see that we've got an entirely new set of prizes for every season. So old gen is unsupported, next gen, we've got brand new seasons, brand new unlocks, brand new prizes. So that's one small thing to look forward to if you're coming from old gen to next gen. New season rewards. One of the biggest differences between 2K23 next gen and 2K22 old gen is the My Player Builder. You got towers and tier system versus the pie charts. 2K has long since done away with the pie chart system and has given us the ability to edit our towers to our own liking. Of course you can't make your build too overpowered, but you do have a lot more leeway than you did with the pie charts. If you want to make a balanced build that can do a little bit of everything, you can actually do that and be pretty successful. This build in particular is basically a play shot, but it has a 93 driving dunk. And with a 90 steal rating, you'd have to call this a two-way playmaking sharpshooting slasher. Now good luck doing that on old gen 2K22 with the pie charts. This is a play shot, looks pretty good, but there's a lot of limitations of what you can do with regards to finishing and defense. And notice the tremendous batch count difference. Now these weren't necessarily bad builds, but they definitely lacked the freedom to do exactly what I want to do with the kind of build I want to make. If you go back to the Concha Del Mar, if you want to get around to different locations, unless you had a season reward, like a go-kart or something like that, you pretty much had to navigate the map on foot. There was still a lot of cool things you could do on the ship. 2K did put a lot of effort into making this a really cool location for everybody to play. Navigating from deck to deck with the loading screens wasn't too bad. The shopping area was pretty nice, but it still doesn't hold a candle to what we have on next gen. On next gen, even though we have season rewards like golf carts and eventually hovercrafts and hoverboards and things like that, we still pretty much fast travel everywhere we want to go. If I want to go shopping, simply fast travel, and I'm instantaneously already there. No loading screens, no anything. And of course the shopping area is a lot more lively, it seems like there's a lot more activity going on. 2K really went out of their way to make sure it felt like a real life mall. And there's always somebody skating around, doing tricks, things like that all throughout the city. Just adds more atmosphere to the overall gaming experience. Another cool feature they brought to 2K23 on Next Gen is the NBA Arena. You can literally see people walking outside, getting ready to buy tickets to your game. And they even advertise your next big matchup. You can even go into the actual arena, and this is where you have things like post-game interviews, and you even have a fashion walk you can do that'll eventually unlock some new animations for you. And after your games, you have the press conference room where you can talk to the press about what happened or some of the, the latest storylines concerning your My Player. And of course, you have your locker room where you meet with your coach, 
change your gear, get ready for the next game. And all of this is by choice too. You don't have to actually go in to play your game. You don't have to talk to the press. Unless of course you're continuing the storyline. Some of those things are, are objectives that have to be met, but this is just a cool feature that they added to the game that we didn't expect. On old gen 2K22, if you wanna play your next My Career game, you just push start, go to the next game, and you just click it and you can begin your next game from right where you stand. You can still do that on next gen, so having the new arena is not necessary, but it is a nice touch. Especially when you consider some of the things that you can do with the new My Career storylines in the future 2Ks. If you're on old gen 2K22 on your My Player and you want to get back-to-back -back matchmaking games, the Rec Center and the Pro-Am are your primary options. So of course we still have that option on next gen 2K23, but now we also have a third location called the Theater. And this is where you can get a whole bunch of different types of game modes, and of course it's matchmaking, so you never have to wait on the got next, just play a game and just wait for the next one. Right now we've got 3v3 park, no squads, and one free throws enabled. That's kind of crazy. And the theater is related to your season objectives. So when you come in here, you are playing with purpose. You're not just playing blindly. One of the things that was finally changed this year is the rec center. It's almost exactly how we suggested it should be. A live atmosphere with a crowd. Just something a little bit more entertaining than the way it used to be. If you're still playing on old gen, you're still playing in the same rec center that we've been playing in for the last few years. Now, if you're still playing on the Concha Del Mar, you're really missing out on one of the biggest improvements that 2K's made recently, and that's with the affiliations. This is going back to how it was in 2K15, 16, and 17. Obviously, you can find a lot of games everywhere. All this art gives you a whole different atmosphere for every location you go to. Sometimes you just feel like you want to switch things up. And by going to the other affiliations, you don't actually lose any percentages by playing here. So it is definitely encouraged to play at different parks. Every single location has its own sort of theme and you really get the sense that you're in a different environment every time you come out to play. Like you really feel like you're somewhere different. And it really does feel like 2K went all out this year to give us that basketball utopia. The new designs of the affiliations really keep things fresh and interesting and of course there's the event center usually every weekend we've got a new event going on and the actual arena opens up like the tower transforms into this you always know when you're going in here it's definitely going to be a challenge this week we've got chips ahoy so i got to put a squad together to add another win to my season objectives now this year 2k really made a big effort in reducing the cheese and creating a skill gap. For example, there's new dribble commands and there's adrenaline boosts tied to your stamina to make the game flow more realistic like a real life basketball game. In real life, you don't have people buzzing around the perimeter, going left and right endlessly until they find themselves wide open for a jump shot where they can then just pull up from deep. It's not actually like that. I mean, you have to be a lot more precise with your dribbles and make better decisions. You actually have to have a bag now and be skillful enough to react to the defense. Even the new dunking controls created a skill gap. Now you can swing on the rim and you can still force posterizers. These are some of the things you just can't do on 2K22. And I have to say that it's a whole lot more satisfying when you get a posterizer and you get that green animation because you chose that command, you made it happen as opposed to holding square or X and just praying that the man does a dunk. Usually when you do get those kind of dunks, the person that's getting dunked on doesn't really respect you for doing it. And one of the new features they added this year is unlocks and animations all carry over to your new builds. So for example, if you get Gym Rat unlocked on your older build, all of the new builds you make moving forward will have Gym Rat as well. To be clear, it's not gonna go to the new builds that you made before you got Gym Rat. So just make sure you get Gym Rat first and then any build you make after that will also have it as well. And all of the animations that you purchase or unlock along the way also carry over to your other builds. Now I'm not gonna do this video without mentioning some of the primary complaints from the community. For example, there's always the new game stability issues that we deal with, lag outs. People get into games and lag out. That's been a problem with most games, especially with 2K over the years. We also have animation resets. Sometimes when there's updates in the city, it resets your animations. So we always have to check those before we start playing. But those of us who are powering through those issues are really having a lot of fun with the game. I may not make as many builds as I made last year, but the builds that I have 
are really fun to use. I do believe 2K23 next gen is a much better gaming experience than 2K22 old gen was. And at the end of the day, I really just want to see as many people as possible all on one platform, all on one generation. We haven't seen that since like 2K20. NBA 2K23 next gen has only been out for a couple months. I'm starting to get those vibes again from 2K16 and 17 where we're all just having fun. I definitely want to see you guys make that leap. It's your boy Shake. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below. Are you still playing 2K22 or are you excited to make the leap to 23 on next gen and be out here with the rest of us? As always, smack that like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.